Wow, that is just stunning. I bet there aren't any more examples of what these are on the three quarter ton from 1939, so just about pre war. Welcome to Old Classic Car and today we find ourselves on a rather soggy day in the West Midlands and this is the Aldridge Transport Museum. I managed to combine a trip out to have a look and buy some spares for the old Ford Anglia with a visit to this museum which I last visited about 10, 12 years ago, something like that. So uh, as it's a particularly horrible day it makes sense to go somewhere indoors and here we are so let's go and have a look and see what delights we can find within the Aldridge Transport Museum. Well, we're all inside the museum now. This is where we are. There's a little map. So let's have a look and see what exhibits are here in the Aldridge Transport Museum. We begin with a Velocet Vogue. Got a streamlined machine, lots of stuff hidden away, it's all very sleek, but probably didn't help actually the maintenance side of things. And alongside that, is a lovely old Jaguar E-Type. E-Type Roadster, Series 3, so that'll be the V12, it could be manual or it could be automatic. But a very handsome machine indeed. Passed a couple more bikes, very nice too. But the main reason, the raison d'etre for this particular museum is celebrating transport, road transport in the West Midlands, I believe. If I have a quick look at the leaflet after, and here we have some of the exhibits. And it looks like a fascinating place here. I'm not even sure what this is. Let's have a quick look, see what we've got here. Wow. Half cab TMT. I'll have to have a bit of a read up and see what that's all about. And this wonderful old lorry is a 1948 Fordson 7V. These particular lorries were built either side of World War II. This is a post war example. Uh, the grille was slightly curvier on the pre war versions, and the post war 7Vs had the type that you see here. This one's got a V8 side valve engine, the old flathead V8, and I'm sure it sounds fantastic. And there's another classic Ford. This is a Mark 1 Ford Transit to drop side pickup truck. Uh, this one registered in 1966. There's one identical to this that goes to some of the steam rallies and vintage rallies near us, but I don't think it's this one. But it's great to see this preserved example down at the Aldridge Museum. Here's a very unusual old lorry. This is a burner, the Swiss burner, ex-army vehicle. Uh, one of the novel things about this one is it's double glazed heated windscreens. The wipers that you can see in the middle of the glass there actually poke through the double glazing. And tucked away in the corner of the main museum building is this fantastic three-wheeled Scammel CUV754 in the livery of GWR, or Great Western Railway. Alongside a very smart Ford D-Series lorry is this wonderful 1929 Austin 6 pickup. Now it looks like it may have been converted from a saloon way back in the olden days, probably in World War II, uh, but what a fantastic old vehicle. And this is probably one of my favourites of all the vehicles on show at this particular museum. Uh, I just think that is absolutely wonderful. Well how about this then, a Morris J2 camper van? That is really quite something with that roof. I've seen these before but never one in the metal as it were. Looks like it's been restored. I did once have a pickup version of the Morris J2 which was quite a rarity. But I've never owned an old camper. Let's see if we can have a peer inside. Back in the day you could have a Morris or an Austin J2. The Austin was the 152 I believe and the Morris was the J2. And this is the Morris version. Basically the idea was that it keep Austin dealers happy, they'd have their version and Morris dealers could sell the Morris badge version but there's no real difference between the two apart from the badging and the name. Wow, 
wouldn't that be perfect though for if you're staying over at a vintage rally steam fair classic car show whatever you could just kip in the back of that and then have a bacon sandwich in the morning a cup of tea and you're right in the middle of the show so there's a lot to be said for running a classic camper van but i can't stop looking at this austin the great thing about the Aldridge Transport Museum is there's very much a, a sense of vehicles being worked on. It's not just a static uh, list of exhibits where everything stays the same year in, year out. There are vehicles being worked upon, and here we've got an old Daimler. Now, apparently, this started out as a 1935 double-decker bus, and in 47 received a van body fitted to the original chassis by the Birmingham firm of River Lee Bodies, and used by Birmingham City Transport to carry cash from garages to the bank each day. That's a unique vehicle that is. So it's starting out as a double decker. Wow. Having owned one or two oversized vehicles myself, I've got a good idea of the work that's involved in bringing back a semi-derelict lorry or other commercial vehicle back to life. And it's no small job. That is a very rare machine indeed. Look at the size of that radiator. Not quite sure what that is. It's an MCW Metro ride from 1988. So the whole spectrum of sort of West Midlands transport is represented here. You've got some early vehicles, and you've got things that are sort of drifting into the preservation world slowly but surely. But if these things aren't saved now, they won't be around in 10, 15, 20 years time. So it's important that a few representative examples of these are squirreled away for future generations to look at. Behind the Guy lorry that we saw before, we've got this wonderful 1953 Guy Arab bus. That's fantastic. look at the information board for this little beauty 1953 built as a demonstrator the LUF or low underfloor had a lightweight aluminium framed and panel body by aircraft specialists Saunders Row it proved to be a one-off but this style of body was seen on many Leyland Tiger Cub chassis built for the BET group between 1954 and 1956 ended service in 1967 used as a seat store and had several preservation owners before being offered to the museum peek inside it's great to see these one-off vehicles survive bit of classic van action this is a 1939 Morris commercial three-quarter ton delivery van fantastic a Ripley cooperative society that is really really nice Isn't that lovely? The original Rexine roof covering. All properly sign written in the 1930s style. Love the shape of the back windows. It's just so evocative of the pre-war era. Can't see a great deal inside. Wow, that is just... Stunning. I bet there aren't any more examples of what these are on the three-quarter ton 
1939, so just about pre-war. Okay, look at the information board, used daily in the Ripley area until 1966. Next to the glorious Morris commercial van, we've got a very interesting Austin Lodestar based water bowser of the 1950s. Let's have a look. 1951 to be precise. This was uh, ordered by the Ministry of Supply. For use during civil emergencies, served in Glasgow, where the four taps provided water to households during breakdown in main supplies. So there you go. So if you had water shortages in your street, one or two, or maybe more of these little Austins would turn up and provide you with water while they fix things. Again, like the Morris that's next to it, that must be a one-off. I can't imagine there's any more of those around. There aren't many Austin Lodestars, but with a tanker body, that must be virtually unique. Just have a quick look at the back end of the Austin. Alongside the old Austin Lodestar, we've got this fantastic Guy Wolf ambulance from 1936. Oh, that's a beauty, that is. Of Guy Motors, very much a local manufacturer of Wolverhampton, England. Not far from here, really. So let's have a look at this then. It's got a Meadows 3.7 litre petrol engine, gearbox by Comma. This Wolf chassis was a spare that had originally been intended for use on the Corporation Dust Cart. It was actually completed in 1938 but with an ambulance body, then used by Guy Motors as their works ambulance until 1968. This vehicle has what's known as a Chinese gear change, where the gear positions are opposite to the normal arrangement. In the factory it was first painted green and later became maroon, but acquired a cream livery when it was used for filming in the Miss Marple TV programmes. The original livery was restored and the vehicle was renovated by museum volunteers in 2014. That's a really nice old vehicle. Let's go and have a peek around the back. Oh yeah, there's the back end of the Guy Motors Limited Works Ambulance. Well, as I've said before, what I like about the old commercial vehicles, especially pre-war and just post-war, they have all this extra styling with these trims and things on the side, which they didn't need. None of that was needed. But they still did it, and it was sort of the pride in the coach builders who added these little extras. It was probably never part of the original design brief, but uh, it appeared there anyway. Let's have a look here. And there's the same information there. Almost certainly it would have been used to help with civilian casualties of bombing raids, and also to take injured military personnel to hospital after the D-Day casualties were moved to the area by ambulance train in 1944. That's beauty. Fantastic. At the end of this row of commercial vehicles, we've got this fantastic 1932 Ford Model B pickup. Isn't that nice? This was the replacement for the Model A and the Model AA. So this is a 1932 petrol engine, three speed GART box, rescued for preservation in 1969 by the late Mr David Lewis who restored it and rallied it for many years until his death when it was given to the museum for continued display. Well, used from new by a boat builder in Stourport, it spent its working life operating on trade plates and did not receive a registration number until after its rescue. And now it's in beautiful condition. Very smart on its original spoked wheels. Now this is a vehicle I'm familiar with. I ran an Austin A40 Devon 
for a few years and I had a couple of pickup trucks as well and this is an ice cream van based on the 10 hundred weight Austin A40 chassis uh, most of these were vans and pickups the commercial versions but a few were bodied specially as ice cream vans and we got this one here I remember seeing this when we came for the ice um, milk float all those years ago but I don't think it was quite as smart as this it's all been restored since then let's have a proper look this is a fairly latish example with a painted grill. The early ones had the Mazak grill, same as the A40 Devon cars. There are a couple of brochure reviews, I think, elsewhere on the channel that show the commercial versions of the A40 in a little bit more detail. But this is probably a one-off. It's a beautiful thing. 1954, 1200cc petrol engine, which was the forerunner of the B-series engine. Four-speed box, steering column change, a bit like the Somerset. Um, delivered to a garage in Kendall as a chassis cab and garage built the ice cream van body onto the chassis spent most of its working life selling ice cream in the Lake District and subsequently passed to the agency press in Leicester who donated it to the museum in 1991 renovation work has been carried out on the engine on the exterior to bring it back to its original appearance however we can't be sure how the interior was arranged for storing and selling ice cream it's not lovely Again, what a stunning shape. It would have been much easier to make something that was a sort of boxy and square. But that wouldn't have looked very nice at all. And again, 1950s coach builders, they put the effort in and made these things, as well as functional, they made them attractive. You know, it would have been really easy just to put, you know, standard van body flat sides and just cut a hole in it. But this is all proper rolled edges, proper returns. Same with this back window. It would have been nice and easy to make a square one or a rectangular one. No, they introduced all the curves, which just makes it all that more appealing to look at. And that is beautiful. So the 1980s, and this is an MCW Metro Cab E registration, so it's like 86, 87, something like that. So a quick look at the info board, 1988, four-speed synchro Ford diesel, two and a half litre. And over in this building we've got more of the passenger carrying vehicles, double deckers, etc. Here we've got an AEC, ex London Transport of course. Still with the destination blinds up there, Hayes End, Southall, Ealing and Acton. Of course if you own very tall vehicles you need a very tall building to put them in. Unfortunately, that's what they've got here. Alongside the AEC, we've got a fantastic old Leyland JOJ222. And then, alongside the Leyland, we have this beautiful old Daimler. Lovely. I'll look up the registration there, LHA 870F, and find out exactly what this is. There's no manufacturer's badge on it, it just simply says middle and red, the people that operated it. Very unusual glazing arrangements at the front here. I'm guessing the overhang was to sort of reduce glare, possibly. What does it say here? Midland Red 5870 BMMO S21 of 1967. We're drawn from service in 1979. If you like your classic buses, vintage commercial vehicles, etc., I well recommend popping round to the Aldridge Transport Museum if you can. At the time of filming, it's only £4 per adult to come in, a couple of pounds for children, so really, if you're in the area, there's no excuse. This looks a bit like the old Leyland Atlanteans I remember travelling on those plane spots and going up to Manchester Airport. So 
J registration, so it's like about 1971, something like that. Finally, an assortment of engines. Bit of everything here. Back axle shows a cutaway example of how the back axle works. If you can hear the rain on the roof, I apologise. So it's chucking it down outside. And the Vela set, is that the LE? Water cooled LE, I think. That's a cutaway example again showing how, how it all works. Shaft drive. Many, many badges from coaches and buses. Maudsley, that's a rare one. Crossley as well. Crossley was a Manchester manufacturer. This mighty engine is a Leyland, brackets AEC 800 series V8 diesel engine. It was an AEC design. Leyland took them over and put them into production. Initially built as a 12 litre engine in 1968, 13 litre versions later appeared, which were among the most powerful and compact engines ever produced by a UK vehicle builder. Well, I think it's probably time to wrap up this video of our little visit to the Aldridge Transport Museum. If you find yourself in the area, I well recommend popping in. It's only a few pounds to get in, help support the place, uh, and some very interesting, mainly commercial vehicles. Pickup trucks, works ambulance, water bowser, or pre-war delivery van, various double-deckers through the back there, and so on. There are quite a few videos about museums and collections that we've been to over the last couple of years on the channel now, so please check some of those out. We've got Brooklands, we've got the Morgan Museum down in Kent, Norfolk Motorcycle Museum, the Dover Transport Museum, etc. And now this one for the Aldridge Transport Museum in the Midlands. Anyway, I hope that was of interest. Please check out some of those other videos and the other videos about cars, lorries and so on elsewhere on the old Classic Car channel and more videos like this along very, very soon. I'll just have another look at this lovely old Austin. Bye for now.